Prothalamion E. Spencer. This story involves the speaker, the wedding, and the contemplation by the one excluded. It is a lovely day, not yet too hot. The speaker has been living the court life, but the time and investment seems to have been all for naught. A despondent mood calls for a walk along the Thames and observing the scene of a double wedding, which may have been the intention. The ladies of the wedding party are decorating their hair and greenery from the meadow and gathering flowers in intricate baskets. It is a good season for flowers. There is plenty and variety. The brides arrive by water, bedecked in bridal white, like swans. They are careful not to soil their finery in the water. The ladies that had been gathering flowers run to greet the brides. They arrive as like the stars in the sky and comparable to the constellations or heavens alone. There is much festivity and joy as flowers are thrown before the two lovely brides. The maids of honor have made garlands for the heads of the most honored ladies and one of them sings a celebration song. All the promise of wedded bliss is wished in song for the happy couples. The matron's song ends and is echoed by all around. The procession carries on to London. Nothing is said or acknowledged as they go by the one watching on the river bank. The story changes to the speaker, born in London, but from an ancient family just outside of it. The stately homes now seem to have been taken over by lawyers. The reputation of the Knights Templar decayed, a family no longer in the best standing, perhaps. And thoughts about the peer of the realm bringing glory to England and keeping it safe from foreign harm, focusing on something else other than the personal woes of the speaker. Elizabeth will inspire poets and songsters into the ages. The wedding is blessed by the arrival of the most noble lord and his courtly attendees. The bridegrooms are honored knights, fair of fortune and face. The two couples come together along the river's, river's edge and make their vows. Prothalamion Calm was the day, and through the trembling air, sweet breathing Zephyrus did softly play, a gentle spirit that lightly did delay, hot titan's beams which then did glisser fair, when I, whom sullen care, through discontent of my long fruitless stay, in prince's court and expectation vain, of idle hopes which still do fly away, like empty shadows did afflict my brain, walked forth to ease my pain. Along the shore of silver streaming Thames, whose rutty bank with the which his river hems, was painted all with variable flowers, and all the meads adored, adorned with dainty gems, fit to deck maidens' bowers, and crown their paramours, against the bridal day, which is not long, sweet Thames, run softly, till I end my song. There in a meadow by the river's side, a flock of nymphs I chance to espy, all lovely daughters of the flood thereby, with goodly greenish locks all loose untied, as each had been a bride. And each one had a little wicker basket, made of fine twigs and trailed curiously, in which they gathered flowers to fill their flasket, and with fine fingers crop full fatiously, the tender stalks on high, of every sort which in that meadow grew, 
They gathered some, the violet pallid blue, the little daisy that at evening closes, the virgin lily and the primrose true, with store of vermeil roses to deck their bridegroom's posies. Against the bridal day, which was not long, sweet tams, run softly till I end my song. With that, I saw two swans of goodly hue come softly swimming down along the lea. Two fairer birds I yet did never see. The snow which doth the top of Pindus strow did never white or show, nor Jove himself when he a swan would be for love of Leda, whiter did appear. Yet Leda was, they say, as white as he, yet not so white as these, nor nothing near, so purely white they were, that even the gentle stream, the which them bare, seemed foul to them, and bade his billows spare, to wet their silken feathers, lest they might soil their fair plumes with water not so fair, and mar their beauties bright, that shone as heaven's light, against their bridal day, which was not long, sweet tams, run softly, till I end my song. Eftsoons the nymphs, which now had flowers their fill, ran all in haste to see that silver brood, as they came floating on the crystal flood, whom when they saw, they stood amazed still, their wondering eyes to fill. Them seemed they never saw a sight so fair, of fowl so lovely, that they sure did deem them heavenly born, or to, or to be that same pair. To be that same pair, which through the sky draw Venus' silver team, for sure they did not seem to be begot of any earthly seed, but rather angels, or of angels' breed. Yet were they bred of summer's heat, they say, in sweetest season, when each flower and weed the earth did fresh array, so fresh they seemed as day, even as their bridal day, which was not long, sweet tams, run softly till I end my song. Then forth they all out of their baskets drew, great store of flowers, the honour of the field, that to the scents did fragrant odours yield, all which upon those goodly birds they threw, and all the waves did strew, that like alpaneous waters they did seem, when down along by pleasant tempe shore, scattered with flowers, through Thessaly they stream, that they appear through lilies plenteous store, like a bride's chamber door floor. Two of those nymphs, meanwhile, to garlands bound, of freshest flowers which in that mead they found, the which presenting all in trim array, their snowy foreheads therewithal they crowned, whilst one did sing this lay, prepared against that day, against their bridal day, which was not long, sweet tams, run softly, till I end my song. Ye gentle birds, the world's fair ornament, and heaven's glory, whom this happy hour doth lead unto your lover's blissful bower, joy may you have, and gentle heart's content of your love's couplement. And let fair Venus, that is queen of love, with her heart-quelling sun upon you smile, whose smile, they say, hath virtue to remove all love's dislike and friendship's faulty guile for ever to a soil. Let endless peace your steadfast hearts accord, and blessed plenty wait upon your board, and let your bed with pleasures chaste abound, that fruitful issue may to you afford, which may your foes confound, and make your joys redound upon your bridal day, which is not long, sweet tams, run softly, till I end my song. So ended she and all the rest around, to her redoubled that her undersong, which said their bridal day should not be long, 
and gentle echo from the neighbor ground their accents did resound so forth those joyous birds did pass along adown the lea that to them murmured low as he would speak but that he lacked a tongue yet did by signs his glad affection show making his stream run slow and all the fowl which in his flood did dwell gan flock about these twain that did excel the rest so far as cynthia doth shend the lesser stars so they in range of dwell did on those two attend and their best service lend against their wedding day which was not long sweet tams run softly till i end my song at length they all to merry london came to merry london my most kindly nurse that to me gave this life's first need of source though from another place i take my name and house of ancient fame there when they came whereas those bricky towers the witch on thames broad aged back do ride where now the studious lawyers have their bowers there will on want the templar knights to bide till they decayed through pride next where into there stands a stately place where oft i gained gifts and goodly grace of that great lord which therein want to dwell whose want too well now feels my friendless case but ah here fits not well old woes but joys to tell against the bridal day which is not long sweet tams run softly till i end my song yet therein now doth lodge a noble peer great england's glory and the world's wide wonder whose dreadful name late through all spain did thunder and hercules to pillars standing near did make to quake and fear fair branch of honour flower of chivalry that fillest england with thy triumph's fame joy have thou of thy noble victory and endless happiness of thine own name thou promisest the same that through thy prowess and victorious arms thy country may be freed from from foreign harms and great eliza's glorious name may ring through all the world filled with thy wide alarms which some brave muse may sing to ages following upon the bridal day which is not long sweet towns run softly till i end my song from those high towers this noble lord eschewing like radiant Hesper with when his golden hair in the ocean billows he hath bathed fair descended to the river's open viewing with a great train ensuing above the rest were goodly to be seen two gentle knights of lovely face and feature beseeming well the bower of any queen with gifts of wit and ornaments of nature fit for so goodly stature that like the twins of jove they seemed in sight which decked the baldric of the heavens bright the two forth pacing to the river's side received those two fair brides their love's delight which at the appointed tide each one did make his bride against their bridal day which is not long sweet tams run softly till I end my song.